Now, the Chase Hospice in Guildford has told BBC Surrey that cuts in services could be inevitable if funding reserves continue to dip. The charity offers support to the families of children and young people who have life-threatening conditions, and they say that in the future they may have to cut staff as well as cutting down the lengths of stays. In a moment, I'll be speaking to David King, who's the chief executive of Chase Hospice. But first, have a listen to Stephanie Nimmo. Her four-year-old daughter, Daisy, is cared for at Chase. And when we spoke to her, she was just about to get her first night off in a year. So yeah, we were just uh, working out our contingency plan because um, Andy and I are going off to see Coldplay in Wembley Stadium and I really don't fancy bombing all the way down here tonight. So the plan would be if Daisy does become ill overnight, which she has done, in fact, the last few times she's been here, um, she would be blue-lighted over to Royal Surrey and then I would join, join the girls at Royal Surrey. Um, this is the only place we can come. It's the only place we can come with Daisy. It's the only place we can actually leave Daisy. And as I say, this is the, the first night that we've um, had a night off. That was Stephanie Nimmo, the mother of four-year-old Daisy, who uses the services at Chase Hospice. David King, Chief Executive of Chase Hospice, welcome to the programme. Um, just for people who may be not aware of what you do, because I know Chase is very well known in the county, but uh, I've only visited myself recently, what kind of services do you offer two families yeah we we provide a range of services i mean you just heard from stephanie and families with life limited children have all sorts of challenges so there are three main things really we we provide a lot of service in the community that's care workers nurses visiting families homes trying to make those nights off that stephanie referred to possible um we also have a hospice just south of guildford and that allows respite that allows again parents sometimes to leave a child for a child to come stay with us in a very safe environment where they're well looked after and perhaps the family to get a holiday which they may not have had for years. And there, there are also specialist services like hydrotherapy pool, multi-sensory and play, all those kinds of things which really help um, some of the children, indeed some of the brothers and sisters. I think one of the important things about our services is the whole family. It's not just the life-limited child, important though that is. Um, it's mums and dads, grandparents, brothers and sisters. So it's quite a range and it's quite hard to sum up. Um, Visiting's always good. I'm glad you yeah. were able to no, do well, it. No, well, it's an amazing <clears throat> place and the atmosphere is very happy and very caring. And as you say, you really get the feeling that the parents and the siblings of, uh, of the, uh, the ill child get every opportunity to take part in life at the hospice. And I was amazed that given the number of families that you help, it doesn't cost a vast amount of money. I mean, it is in the millions to run. But the, the, but the, the good work that you do as a result of that money is just phenomenal. And you can see it in the faces of, of the people who go there. How much does it cost to run? What's the bottom line and what is the problem with the funding at the moment? OK, we need about £4 million a year to run, which, as you say, sounds like a big number. And if you're responsible for the fundraising, it feels like a big number. But um, what we deliver for that, as again you say, is really impressive. The, the problem um, is a lot of charities, we're no exception, have been hurt by the recession. And we are now struggling. Most of our income, 90 pence in every pound that we raise, comes from fundraising. So we get you know, 10p in the pound from the government, and we're concerned about that. We were hearing earlier about cuts. So we're worried about whether that will endure, but that's only 10p in every pound we need. We need 90 pence in every pound from donations of one form or another. It is absolutely extraordinary when you hear from people like Stephanie who say that this is the only place, this is the only option that keeps them sane, that, that in a way gives their child the quality of life that they need, and yet you're almost wholly reliant on, on voluntary subscriptions. Yeah, um, one can talk loads about, you know, should the government do more or not? I mean, I think our view is we we lobby through groups like Children's Hospices UK, which is an umbrella group, to try and get more money. Meantime, there are families like, um, you know, hearing from Stephanie's mum again, who need our help now. So we go out there and we're trying to fundraise and get the message across that we need need funds, our income's gone down. And this is National Hospice Week. What what are you trying to encourage people to do if they... they think that they'd like to get involved because sometimes you hear about these things on the radio and 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 it may just go in one ear and then you promise to do something and it what what could you say to people what's the first thing they could do if they want to help you out a couple of things i mean we desperately need money and um i could go into lots of details about how we do that but if i tell you a third of our income comes from community fundraising one form or another so that's flag days events all sorts of you know things from coffee mornings you name it it happens And for us still, that's a third of our income. So probably the biggest single thing someone could do was get on the website, which is chasecare.org.uk, have a look and see what possibilities there are. There's all sorts of events. And I'd encourage people to do something, however small, because if enough people do something, it makes a real difference to us. 
The other thing, perhaps, is, and I talked about visiting a minute ago, we've got an open day coming up in October. Um, again, details from the website, but people can have a chance to look around and get the feel of the place you talked about, because it is different. People expect one kind of you know, feeling when you go into something called a hospice, and Chase is very different, and go and have a look. David, thank you very much for coming on. We're going to hear more from people who work at Chase Hospice and some of the the parents who are there uh, and, of course, uh, some of the the little people who spend their time bombing around that place with big smiles on their faces after nine o'clock this morning. Uh, But that website again, chasecare.org.uk. David King, thanks very much for coming in this morning. Thank you. Time now.